Well, guys, you may think you're a man. You know, you may do manly man things like run ultra marathons naked or fix your car using only a Swiss Army knife or maybe you eat only beef jerky for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But let me assure you guys, you ain't got nothing on the men of Vanuatu. This archipelago is located deep in the heart of the South Pacific, and it's so far off the beaten path that when you get there, you begin to doubt the existence of the path itself. <laughs> and it was uh, this remoteness that appealed to my father who brought my family there when I was just 12 years old. And Vanuatu is best known to outsiders for its ritual of land diving, in which men jump off towers in the middle of the jungle with nothing but vines strapped to their ankles. You heard me correctly, vines, kind of like the creepers you see crawling up your back garden wall, but it's actually not a sport. And you'd probably say to yourself, well, then why the hell would anyone do this of their own volition? Which is exactly what I asked my father when he told me he had found out about this wonderful thing. And he took me aside and he put his arm around my shoulder and he said, son, it's a way for these tribes to ensure that they have bountiful yam harvests. Plus, it's a rite of passage for the young men of the tribe. So basically, bungee jumping minus the safety harness, the helmet, and the multi-million dollar insurance policy. And as he told me this, I have to say that my own rights of manhood seemed really small and insignificant in comparison. You know, we're talking like riding a bike without the training wheels or lighting the fuses on the Roman candles on the 4th of July or, you know, being allowed to spend the night at a friend's house. I mean, like, ooh, <laughs> like might graze my knee or, you know, get a minor powder burn or eat so much junk food that uh, I wake up with a stomach ache the next day. Um, when you land dive, you know, serious injury and even death are very, very real possibilities. And despite the fact that this all sounds like the craziest idea ever, my father booked us a flight over to Pentecost Island, where the event took place just a few days after we got to Vanuatu. And it turns out that the plane that we were going to take over there was a single-engine Cessna from the 1950s that was patched and then repatched again and then repatched again using duct tape. It uh, covered up the big holes in the hull and helped connect the wing struts to the body of the plane. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, we made it to Pentecost in this flying death trap in one piece, only to discover another huge problem. Uh, no airport. Instead, there was just a muddy field full of goats, which the pilot decided to dive at, kamikaze style. And uh, surprisingly, we landed with like this real light touch, and uh, not a single goat was killed or maimed in the process. <laughs> and we ended up over at the dive site just a little while later, where we instantly became as much an object of fascination for our hosts as they were for us. Um, back then, I was not exactly what you would call a fashion plate. Um, you know, sometimes people argue that not much has changed. Uh, <laughs> I was wearing Coke bottle glasses, um, those very short athletic shorts that were popular, and, uh, and a fanny pack. Um, meanwhile, the men of Pentecost were wearing nothing but hand-woven bark penis sheaths. And they had these black belts just above their hips, and the sheath was attached to it, which yanked their penises upwards in such a profoundly painful angle that, like, even telling you right now, I'm kind of cringing in a little bit. And not only that, here, these guys were about to jump off a 100-foot tall tower that had been constructed in a clearing in the jungle on the side of a hill, and the dive side faced the downward slope. There was a trunk of a tree running up the center of it, kind of like its spine, and the whole thing was made of nothing but freshly cut saplings and vines. And... It, it was basically the craziest thing you've ever seen. It looked equal parts impressive and utterly unstable. And to begin the ceremony, the men of the village formed these two rough lines with the bare-chested tribal women kind of arrayed behind them. And each man had this long stick, kind of like a sturdy walking cane that came up to his chest. And they began this kind of rising and bawling sing-song chant that they punctuated occasionally and totally randomly with like hoots and yelps and whistles. And 
as they sang, they moved from side to side, kind of their feet keeping rhythm to the music, and they would bring their sticks down to the ground to emphasize the beats. And as I'm watching it unfold, I suddenly had this kind of horrifying thought, which was, what if they make all the boys in attendance jump? And so I made sure to stick close to dad for the duration of the day. But when it did come time for the first boy to jump, he scuttled up that tower with this kind of nimbleness and agility and quickness that showed that he had absolutely no fear. And I'm staring at him with like saucer eyes and having no understanding or empathy for what must be going through his head at that moment. He looked excited to be there. I frankly thought he was absolutely frickin' bonkers. And he reaches a platform that was about three stories up from the ground. And he, he sat down and he tied his vines around his ankles and then he stepped up to the edge and he looked down and then he just gave this little hoot. He was like, whoop! And he just clapped his hands and then he just kind of fell forward. And his arms kind of lazily crossed his chest as he was rocketing downwards. And I'm just like this. And then suddenly the vines straightened out. There was this like snapping noise and suddenly his head was like swinging just a couple inches from the ground. And as he was dangling there, he was yelling, Awoo! Awoo! Awe! And all the Vanuatuans on the ground yelled back, Awoo! Awoo! Awe! And I found myself kind of cheering along with them, even though in that moment, his utter lack of selfless bravery was making me feel incredibly meek and weak in comparison. And I was thinking about my utter lack of manliness as we reboarded our duct tape express to head home. <laughs> and I ended up in the co-pilot seat, which gave me this amazing front row view of the, duck, of the goats going this way and that as we took off. And after we'd climbed up a few thousand feet, the pilot turned to me and yelled over the roar of the engines, do you want to try this? And he was like kind of nodding towards the steering yoke that was in front of me, which was identical to the one that was in front of him. And that's when I heard this little voice inside my head, be a man for your tribe. <laughs> There'll be yams for everyone. And so, like that boy on the tower, you know, I couldn't say no. I had to take a leap of faith. And so I grabbed the steering yoke and I could kind of feel the plane vibrating violently below me, trying to wrestle itself away from me. But I held on and I smiled because I knew that, you know, I may have arrived on Pentecost, a boy, but I was leaving a man. And even though I didn't have a bark penis sheath on, I found myself yelling, Awoo! Awoo! Away! Thank you. <laughs>